Terry from Smooth Wash Up. Hello, Styrene Fanatics. Right, time for another quick kit review. Something again. If you're losing your mojo and you're on a big build and it's just getting to you, this next one might be for you. It's something a bit different. It's a sci fi genre. It's a really cheap kit and just a bit of fun. Now, I would love it to be a product review of. Haha. <laughs> this. Now, this is a really nice cider. It's. Available from Tesco's and other shops are available, but... Okay, <laughs> enough of my drinking habits. Let's go into the review. See you in a bit. All systems have been alerted to your presence, sir. Hi guys, welcome back. Sorry about all the malarkey there. I was just having a little play about me being a joker. Ha ha, very funny. Right, we're going to do a little kit review. It's a very, very cheap kit. It's sci-fi genre and it's Star Wars. Ooh, may the force be with you. Um, I happened to fall into a shop whilst I was out shopping with my better half and I uh, accidentally fell against a shelf that had a, there was an offer on. Um, it's a UK shop called Hobbycraft. Other shops are available. Um, and there was a wee Ravel kit. For my American friends, it's Ravel. Um, mostly famed for their car kits and their truck kits, uh, which tend to be okay. Um... There are other stuff, I'll let you make your own decisions on that. That's not my position here because I haven't built a Revel kit or Revel kit for many a moon. But I do like sci-fi stuff and I had less than a tenner in my pocket and they had these little kits here. The kit I'm going to be reviewing is a, is a Revel Star Wars. It's a level 3 kit, so it's a glue together kit. It's in a scale of 1 to 112, um, and there's a whole 21 parts in it. <laughs> Alright, okay, I said it was going to be something fun. I mean, you're not going to be racking your brains out, might get your mojo back up. Now, the actual length of the model is 110 millimetres. Now, I've got a, a steel rule here, so 110 millimetres is about that size. And the width of it is 99 millimetres which is about that size. Um, so it's a small kit. It's supposed to be a fun build. Now, um, this kit originally came out in 2007. Um, it was a glue together kit. I'm just going to pop up a picture just now. Uh, this kit was model 06723. Uh, it was the original boxing of the, the Star Wars 1, 112X Wing Fighter. Um, Okay, back to me. Now, in 2012, they decided to bring out a pop together kit, which I now I don't build a lot of Rebel stuff or Rebel. Um, I'm assuming it's a level one or a two kit because it was a, a pop together kit, so it's based on the same casting, but it clicks together. You don't have to use any glue. And uh, this is a kit here. Now, the part number for this click together kit was 85 8337. Back to me. So, we've went from a glue together kit to a pop together kit, and in 2015, they reboxed this with new decals, and this is the kit that I have. Uh, I'll just pop up the picture. Um, that's a kit. Um, this is a kit I'm going to be reviewing, um, and it is a glued together kit, and it has new decals in it, back to me. Um, they have, now, I don't know how, if Ravel run a sort of side-by-side um, -side program. They've also, in 2000, and they've put an X on it, but I'm assuming it's 2016 on. They've done another new box with a new D, with the decals on now these pop together kits are basically all the decals are on them and you just clip them together they brought another one out i'm assuming it's 2016 on i'll pop this up it's another snap together kit and it's 00650 okay so that's kind of the history of the kit back to me um and where rebel have kind of went with it so i was looking for something fun i love sci-fi stuff i'm going to try and not waffle too much um, just seeing if I've wrote any more detail on it no that's basically all of it so this is a level 3 kit 
So they're not aiming it at the beginner, but to me, 21 parts, even though it's small, it is a beginner kit. Um, and this is a box. So we're going to go on now with the inbox review. Here we go. Right guys, I said I was going to go right back into the review. Um, <clears throat> but it just crossed my mind um, about the sort of Star Wars genre of, you know, sci-fi modelling. Now, I come from Scotland, which is in the UK, and we're currently going through the Brexit. Um, <clears throat> at the current moment, Re Revel, which is a German company, or Rebel, is a German company, and because we're part of the European thing, this is a Disney kit. Um, Revel have got the... Oh, what's the word? When you patent something, they've got the disc distribution rights, that's it. Revel have got the distribution rights for anything Disney or Star Wars orientated in Europe. So, officially, <clears throat> main, main online or shops retailers are only allowed to supply if they're in the European Union uh, Revel kits or Revel kits. Um, this brings up a small issue. Now, although some of you that follow Revel and the Star Wars gen genre well no there used to be um a company that used to do fine molds kits of all the star wars stuff they were quite expensive uh revel bought them over so if you see any revel fine molds kits it isn't revel that's made them um they bought over a company so they've taken that over so if you're used to the fine molds kits they'll be reboxed under revel there's another company that make cracking sci-fi kits um I'm going to I'm going to use a swear word, Bandai, Bandai, right? Okay, um, Bandai, Japanese company. They're all clicked together. They do all the Gundam models. They do all the Star Wars models and and lots of other sci-fi genres. Now, because Revel here in Europe have got the franchise for selling in Europe, Bandai are officially not allowed to sell their kits in the UK. We can get them. And in my opinion, they are better. I'm not seen some of the fine molds kits. Possibly the fine molds kits are better, but Bandai kits are better. But we can't get them. We can't walk into a local shop in the UK and buy a Bandai kit. We've got to sneak them in online. So we are limited to these Revel kits. So, without any further ado, what are we looking at? Right, okay, box art. Now I'm just fucking my camera up here. This is the box art of the 2015 Rebox, which includes new decals. They're badging this as a 03601, which is the part number of the kit. And it's got a Disney logo in the bottom right here. So basically what we're getting here is, on the artwork, quite a heavily weathered sort of X-Wing fighter. On the side on there, it's just a load of rubbish but it's telling you it rebel de on the end tells you it's a level three kit and 21 parts and the sizes on the other side a little bit more artwork there's there's not a lot on the outside of the box it is quite a small kit so i'm going to just set my um camera up in the usual position off to the side here and i'm going to open the box now i have had a look at this so, we get an instruction set in full colour. We get a huge bag of sprues, three sprues. And we get, hmm, appears to be nothing else. There is, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So, as far as the sprues in the kit goes, there are three sprues. They're all just bunged in together. They are small, we have a small uh, sprue of clear parts, the annoying part about the clear parts, which is a canopy, um, is that they're not in a separate bag to stop them being scratched, but it is a level 3 kit, it's a £6 kit. They did also have this kit, the exact same kit, and it was, it was badged as a starter kit, and it had on the top uh, paint 
a tube of poly glue, two or three wee humbrol acrylic paints and a paintbrush. Um, it was £13, but this is the exact same kit without all... I'm quite blunt with my reviews, the crap Revel paints on the top. You don't need them, so it's okay for... If you buy your son or your daughter a kit and say, look, you like Star Wars, build this kit. Here's a kit, they can build it up from that. But for the extra for £7, which you could buy two of these for, it really isn't worth it. And if you're a model maker with adult supervision, let your kids have a shot at building one of these under your supervision. But use your paints. Don't pay for all the... Anyway, I'm waffling. So there's a lot of clear parts. There is... Does it even have a sprue number on it? It doesn't. Um, okay. So I'll get my pointy stick out. And I'll get this first sprue on the floor here and I'll even put my steel rule above it so you get an idea of scale if it comes out. It might not because it's all shiny so I'm just going to move my camera across and show you the sprue. So on this sprue and it's a quite a soft um, light grey plastic we have one, two, three, four engine intakes which are detailed on here we have one half of an engine and we have one of the x-wings okay and the other half of the x-wing we have the cockpit detail and the back of the cockpit now my camera doesn't have a zoom so i'm coming in close i will say even though it's a tiny tiny little kit with tiny, tiny little bits of flash on. It has nice crisp detail. Can you hear this clicking? All right, let me see if you can hear it. I'm picking up the lines on the kit. These would take a wash really, really well. All the, all the lines on the wings and everything. So for all it's a tiny, tiny little kit, and it is a Rebel kit, there is some nice crisp detail on the wings and everything. So I'm hoping that uh, once it's together we can get some nice uh, panel line washes and maybe a bit of streaking and stuff on that on it. On the back, again, nice nice crisp detail. There are ejector pin marks but Revel have actually been clever and put them on the parts that you won't see. So yeah, I will give them that. Tiny tiny little sprue, not many parts on, that's the first one. The next sprue is the main body of the aircraft or spacecraft. And again, it's got really quite nice fine detail in it. Um, all the wee motors on the top, the wee space for R2-D2 to go in, and just nice crisp panel lines. The same underneath, we've got nice... Can you hear it? I'm catching the panel lines here with my wooden stick. There is quite a lot of nice crisp detail underneath. Um, we have the other three halves of the engines, and again... Oh, I wish I could get the detail. I don't have a zoom in the camera. There is some nice detail on these. All the wee ribbons. Stuff like that. I don't know what they call these long probes that come out the end. It's possibly the laser weapons. It's been a while since I've watched Star Wars. Um, so we've got the four weapon probes. We have a tiny, 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 tiny. Right, okay. How tiny is Luke Skywalker, if that is the pilot? He is 13 millimetres tall, this pilot. And he's actually really detailed. So when I go in to do this guy, I'm going to be struggling to pick out his suit and his straps and things like that. Good thing is you don't actually see much of him once he's in. And the other thing, now, <laughs> I love R2-D2. I actually bought a Bandai kit with R2-D2 and R5-D5 uh, for my partner. She's determined she wants to build it herself, but I do an inbox review. Um, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little R2-D2 in here. And he's lovely, and he is quite detailed. But he is only... Oh, James, what is he? 10 millimetres in height. He's absolutely gorgeous. And that's all the parts there is. 
So if you're looking for a fun build and you want to maybe just stick it together, um, paint it up, maybe do a wee bit of weathering on, it's not going to be a hard cut to do. You'll spend more time painting this than you will gluing it together. But what I am quite impressed with, and I'm just going to go into this just now, is the Revel instruction sheet. Now inside the instruction sheet is all the health and safety, blah, blah, blah. But if you tip that out, what you get is a little sheet, a little sheet of decals. Now, quite interestingly, they actually give you a decal to go on the clear canopy to save you painting the lines on. So if your child is attempting this kit, they could, if they're not into painting all the little fine lines, they could put the decal on. Um, there's a stripey decal for the the, the blasters um, and all the red ones for the wings and the body panels and things like that. There's not a lot of decals. Um, what do they say on them? I don't know who they're made by. Uh, they're printed in Italy, so I'm kind of wondering if they're cartograph. Um, I can't confirm or deny whether they're cartograph or not. But um, Revel is part of Hobbyco. So uh, there is quite a nice little decal set, which comes inside the other set of uh, safety instructions about using glues. And I'm... Um, Probably crinkling all these up, but right, okay. Right, now, what impressed me, right, <clears throat> my channel is, for all I share tips, and I like building Tommy and motorbikes and everything like that, I got introduced to modelling by my dad, and I was just a kid, I was maybe about 10 or 11. So, you've got a 10 or 11 year old child at home, and they're going, oh, I want to build a model kit, dad, or mum. What you get on the front page of this um, is a nice colour um, photograph of the kit built up, glued together, no paint on it, um, and just with the decal, su decal supplied, or transfers, or whatever you want to call them. Okay, so that's that. We go on to the first page, and for the new model builder, it tells you, read the instructions... Look at the numbers on the sprue gates, the tools that you'll need for doing it, how to elastic band things together, tape things together, even show close pegs, you know, all the tools that we use. They advise washing the sprues off in soap and water, but I tend to find that most kits now, with the injection moulding processes, you don't have to do that. It even tells them how to cut the parts off the sprue, but then it shows them to take the part that they've cut off and test fit it. Um... I'm quite impressed at this because I haven't looked at a set of Revel instructions for many, many years. I've been away for modelling for 30 years. And for a child approaching this and it comes up with, don't glue this, take the part that you've just cut off and cleaned up and test to see if it fits. And only then, if it fits, put the little drops of glue on and glue it on. I thought that was actually quite good. Um, obviously, it's not... I aim at new modellers, somebody that's never modelled, etc. This is why I'm going into this detail. Um, then tells you to stir your paint up before using it, and then apply the paint on whatever part it is, allow it time to dry. Um, but if you do have to glue a part on afterwards to shave it back, and then apply the glue, another wee tip. Tells you to use a magnifying glass when you're painting really small parts. I'm kind of getting that way with my age. <laughs> uh, and allow time for it to dry. Then they're saying cut it from a sprue. Well, guys, we've all got different opinions on that, and we know how to stick cocktail sticks on and stuff. But for, for a child that's getting to do one of these models for the first time, it might be easier for them to paint it on a sprue and then touch up any wee bits that are missed off. Then tells you how to cut the decals out, how to soak them in water, how to slide them off. So, approaching this from if one of your children was going to do this build, the, the Revel instructions are really quite good. The next page, they go on to what all the symbols mean. So you've got glue, which uh, auf Deutsch is Kleiben. I do like German instructions because they sound like really angry. And then they've got don't glue, nicht Kleiben. And then they've got paint, which is bemalen. And then clear parts, which is klar, oh, hold on, klar sich teile. 
Uh, optional parts is Valvice. Um, this one says soak and apply decals. Now I've never read this in German before, but I find it quite amusing, and hence I'll put it in. It's Archibald in Wasser in Weichen und Anbringen. Okay, so that's soak and apply decals. <laughs> I just find them funny. The exclamation mark is obviously attention, or in German, Achtung! Um, and then the numbers of the sequence of assembly or to salmon bow or <laughs> I just sorry, it cracks me up. You just might be going off for Christ's sake. This is a six pound kit, Terry. What are you doing? But uh, the recommended to fix clear parts is Sur Anbringung de Klarteile im Fuhlen. And recommended for fixing the decals is Sur Anbringung der Absbilder im Fuhlen. I just find that quite amusing. Um, they do have a colour call out. I'm pretty sure that these are all um, rebel colours. So they're looking for a, a silk matte white, which is vice, seed and matte. They're looking for a flesh colour for the guy's face, which is hautfarbe matte. Uh, they're looking for a stone grey matte, which is steingrau matte. They're looking for an orange gloss, which is, I don't know how they pronounce orange in German, orange, orange glass end. Um, a light grey map, hell grey map. Now, the guys at Build Tanks will recognise this next word. There's a dark grey silt map, which is dunkel grau. Yeah, ich liebe dunkel grau. So, we're into something in German that some of you tank builders might recognise. Uh, dunkel grau, seed and mat, so semi gloss. Um, tar black mat? Is that just not like black? Or what they call tear schwarz mat? Uh, they're looking for a grey mat or grau mat. They're looking for a battleship grey mat, so Geschutz grau mat and a silver metallic or silver metallic. Sorry for going on so much about that information. I just, I did German at high school and I find German quite funny. Um, it's not an insult to the Germans, I just find it very, it's like aggressive. It's like, I love you. Ich liebe dich! Which, pff, folk in the UK might giggle at. Right, it gives you the, all the sprue call-outs. So you've basically got two sprues and clear parts. And a contact number if you need any spare parts. So you can get them from a place in Hertfordshire in the UK if you happen to totally mess up this kit. Right, okay, so the first part they tell you to detail up um, Luke Skywalker. And it was black, orange, bit of grey, and there's little decals. Now, remembering this guy is teeny, teeny, tiny. They actually went into quite a lot of detail on this, about doing this little guy. And the cockpit, and the cockpit colours, and he pops in on a little pin. They then go into the top and the sides and where all the decals go. And the cockpit going in with the, one of the clear parts and the, the top canopy. And how to apply the decals onto the clear parts if they don't want to paint them. Um, then we're on to step three where it's got the big wings. Uh, tells you colours where the decals go. The other engine half and the intakes. Um, and then basically sticking the two engine halves together with the little bit. Uh, the same on that one, and then they go on to, now I'm sorry, my camera, I'm trying to move it about to show you these, but it's not a zoom camera, so then they give you the other wing with the decal call outs and the paint colours and everything, there's an Achtung there for some reason, um, not sure what the Achtung is, but one is labelled 5R, the right hand engine, and one is 5L, so maybe it's that. So then you do the engine halves on that side of the wing. I do like these are in colour. I mean, for a six pound kit, <laughs> they, they do go into some detail. And then it shows you how to stick the two parts together. So basically one slots into the other. There's a couple of arc tongues there where they're showing you what parts uh, locate into which pins and everything, which is ideal for a child building this. And it tells you not to glue these parts together. Nicht Gleiben. Um, then we come on to this part where we've got all the, I'm going to call them ailerons. 
Uh, but an aileron is a, a device for making an aircraft change elevation. I, what are these called? These gun things. Anyway, on the clip together kits, this twisted decal is applied. What I've noticed on the actual decals is it's not a twist that you have to pull out and turn round. Right, I'm just grabbing the decals here. Right, this bit, I thought it would have been one long bit of blue and you just twirl it round, twirl it. No, it's actually like that and you fold it over. So you've got to get it to match up. Is it worth me going with masking tape and going round and round and round? I don't know. I'll approach that when I get to it. But anyway, the four gun pods on or ailerons and two of them diagonally opposite have these blue twirly uh, decals on them. Obviously you put them on after they're painted, but if a kid's doing it, it's white plastic. They can just put them on. Step seven, it goes more on to the fuselage. Um, what bits to glue? Um, what bits to put the, the decals on and things like that and then it's basically each side of the fuselage glues on either side of the wing base with the cockpit part in between and it details painting the cockpit part up in the corner hopefully you're picking that up on camera then it goes on to R2-D2 now this guy's tiny and <coughs> alright his silver head his white body and the rest of it's decals could you replicate that in paint in 1112? If you can, I want to see what magnifiers you use. So, that's that bit. Then we're going on to, once it's together, there's further decals to put on. More decals to go on. I think there's some optionals. More decals, again, in the big colour thing. And more decals. That's it. Now... I may take the mic out of Revel. They do make good car and uh, truck kits. I would love to do a truck kit. If you're bored, your armour build's taking far too long, you want to do something fun, I always tend to find if you want to do something fun, do something that's cheap, really easy to do. You can have a giggle with it. It doesn't matter if you muck it up. It's a quick, fun build and it kind of breaks the monotony of stuff. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a video build on this. I haven't yet decided whether I'm going to put LED lights in the cockpit. That's something I might bring up in my uh, June What's in the Pipeline. I just thought I would share with you that I went out and I stumbled, stumbled as you do, into a model shop with a tenner in my pocket which is £10 UK, which is probably about $15. And I saw this kit for £6, which is probably about $8.50 or $8.50. Um, I don't mean to take the mickey of American people. I do like them. It's just a, it's just a thing I do. Um, and that's the Rebel Star Wars 1-1-1-2 scale X-Wing fighter. But it's the glue together and not this, the the pop together one. Um, if I could get my hands on Bandai, I could do comparisons, but to be quite honest, I've been away from modelling for 30 years, and I saw this in the shop, and I went, it's £6, there's not many parts in it, alright, it's not going to be a hard build, but what can I do with the weathering, and that's what I'm going to experiment with, and have a wee bit of research, and see what they actually look like, and I'll do a build video on it, if you want to see it, but I'm going to do it anyway, so... Sorry for waffling on, for a cheap £6 Rebel, uh, Rebel Level 3 kit, I just thought I had to share it with you guys, because it's alright pumping out, here's this Tamiya kit, you know, here's this Ming kit, and all the rest of it. These little kits are overlooked, and they're really fun to make. So, Styrene Fanatics, it's me, Terry from Smooth Workshop. Hope you enjoy this. If you don't fancy this yourself, Get your kids involved. Start them young. My dad brought my first Airfix Spitfire kit home when I was 10 years old. Okay? I got to use glue. I got to use sharp knives. Because it's all too health and safety now. I was 10 years old and I was given a scalpel. Okay? And I got to use paint. Which had fumes coming off them. I mean, we're talking Humbrol enamel paints. It was under my dad's supervision though. And it never hurt me. Kids need to get into these things. They need... Just do it. Anyway.
Terry from Smooth Workshop. Terry, bye.